Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Numbers. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support me on Steady or PayPal. Of course, today in part 5 we are still talking about the natural numbers, but now we will introduce the multiplication. You could say multiplication comes from laziness, because it's much work to write something like this. You already know, for the addition this makes sense, because we don't need any parentheses by the associativity. However, we still need a lot of symbols here for this simple sum. We just add some 4s and we have exactly 5 of them. Therefore, it's much shorter to just define it as 5 times 4. And we simply use the dot as a new symbol for this operation. Ok, then in the same logic, this sum we have to define as 6 times 3. So you see, so far so easy, whenever we have a sum where only one number occurs, we can rewrite that with our new multiplication. Therefore, this should also work when the sum is very short. If the 4 only occurs once, we have 1 times 4. So with respect to our multiplication, the 1 does not do anything. However, if the 4 now occurs 0 times, the sum has just a value 0. Which means the only meaningful definition for 0 times 4 has to be 0. Ok, so we know what the multiplication should do and we already could define some of the outcomes. However, we have the same problem as we had for the addition, we need to define it for infinitely many combinations. And obviously, we can't write them all down. Therefore, the question is still, how can we define the multiplication? Ok, the first step for this is to note that the multiplication should be a map. There we have two numbers as the input and one natural number as the output. Ok, and then in the next step we have to give the definition of this map. So maybe this looks all familiar, because we had the same discussion when we introduced the addition. And indeed we can use a lot of things we've already learned. In particular we know, we don't have to give an explicit definition, we can give a recursive definition. Therefore we first have to say how the starting point 0 acts. And that's what we've already discussed, we should get out 0, no matter what m is. Now the second ingredient we need would be something that tells us how the successor of n acts. In other words, are we able to define n plus 1 times m. In order to do that, let's look at an example to see what we actually want. Of course, 5 times 2 should be just given by the sum of 5 2s. However, when we now add another 2, we should get out 6 times 2. Ok, not so surprising, but here you should see the successor of 5. And on the other hand, here we still have 5 times 2. And of course, this is the recursive connection we searched for. Therefore, in the general definition we would write, take n times m and add another m. And since we want to be completely precise, we set parentheses here. Certainly, you already know that we will just agree to say that the dot binds closer than the plus sign and then we can just omit the parentheses. This makes everything easier to read. Ok, summing up, here we have a recursive definition for the multiplication. And by Dedekind's recursion theorem I showed you when we discussed the addition, the multiplication here is also well defined. Knowing this, let's discuss the properties the multiplication has to offer. Of course, they are similar to the ones we have for the addition. The first one is simply that for the multiplication of three numbers, we can set the parentheses as we want. As for the addition, this is known as the associative law. And the other law we got to know there was the commutative law. It simply tells us that we are allowed to change the order in the multiplication. And the last one we immediately get from the definition is simply 1 times m is always m. So we have the number 1 as the neutral element with respect to the multiplication. Now please recall, with respect to the addition, this was the number 0. But otherwise we have the same calculation rules for both operations. For this reason, a fitting question would be, how do we connect both operations? Of course, this is something you learn in school, how to deal with when you have addition and multiplication in one calculation. Or in other words, how can we rewrite an expression like this? And of course, you know it, you can expand it like this. And we call it the distributive law. 
For this, maybe it's a good idea to write down the proof by induction. Now the variable we do the induction for should be again n. Therefore the base case would be starting with n is equal to 0. Of course, for the induction proof we will need the recursive definition of the multiplication, therefore you find it here in the red box again. Now for the base case let's calculate the left hand side and the right hand side where we put in 0 for n. Here 0 times any natural number is simply defined as 0. Similarly on the right hand side we have 0 plus 0. And of course by the definition of the addition this is also 0. Now since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side the base case is finished. Then let's do the induction step which means we assume that this one is true for n and then we show it's also true for n plus 1. The assumption that the property holds for a fixed n is often called the induction hypothesis. Ok, then let's do the induction step by writing down the left hand side for n plus 1. At this point you should see that in the first step of course the recursive definition can help us. So maybe let's mark the usage of the box with a star. The only difference to the box we have is that the role of m here is given by m plus k. However, now in the first part of the term you should recognize the induction hypothesis. So we can substitute this expression with that. Now you should see we just add up 4 natural numbers. And of course I am allowed to set parentheses here. After that I want to use the commutative law for the addition and exchange the order of these two numbers. Hence we get this. The reason for this was to have all the m's on the left and all the k's on the right. Because now I can rearrange the parentheses. So here and there. And now you should recognize for the last time the recursive definition we can use. Here for the first part we have n plus 1 times m and for the second part we have n plus 1 times k. And now you should see this is exactly the right hand side of the distributive law for n plus 1. In other words the induction step is correct. And with this the distributive law is proven. Ok, I hope you now have an understanding how the multiplication works and then we go deeper into the realm of numbers in the next videos. Therefore I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.